Okay, let's talk about the Quest 3 and the various methods that people have been using to connect this for PC VR gaming. Now, for a long time, everybody has said virtual desktop, that's just the way to go. It's, it's the gold medal application out there. It costs 20 to $30, something like that. Um, but in order to connect your Quest 3 to virtual desktop, you need to shell out some money and you have to get a 6E wireless router. Um, the reason why you need 6E wireless router is because it allows transfer speeds up to 2.4 gigabytes per second. Uh, the internet comes in to a port here. You can then connect your PC to here. Then the wires wirelessly connects to your Quest 3. But if you're doing long gamings and you know, racing sims or flight sims or something like that, you kind of also need to have like a whole bunch of backup of batteries that you are constantly swapping out as you go hour after hour into your, into your game. Um, there is another method that I think allows you to utilize all the best features of virtual desktop, but you don't need to shell out money for all these batteries. You don't need to shell out money for expensive 6E wireless routers. I think you can probably get most of it done for under $50. So let's talk about that. Let's get down and dirty with the Quest 3 virtual desktop and how to connect through an ethernet jack. Okay, in order to get the best results out of your Quest 3 and virtual desktop for PC VR gaming, I highly recommend hardwiring your Quest 3 into your home internet network so that you have stable transfer speeds and you don't have to deal with the wireless network issue. Um, the reason why I started down this path was because when I was using the wireless network with the Quest 3, I was getting big stutters, especially in iRacing, when I would get to a heavily detailed portion of the track. It's always right around a, a turn that needs my full attention of when the brake zone is. I would get big stutters and I would find myself off the track. So I started researching how to get rid of these big stutters and I stumbled across this solution. You only need a couple pieces of equipment and it's, it's not expensive. I will put links to everything in the description below. Um, the first thing that you're gonna need is a little switch. I think this is $15 or so on Amazon. Now, if you are sitting next to your home internet provider router and you have extra switches in the back, then you don't need this. But if you do have a cable coming out from another room and you have access to a long ethernet cable, you're gonna want to insert the internet cable from your router in here to provide power um, to the internet from here. From here, you need two connection outs, right? So you need one cable to plug in here that's gonna go to your PC, that's now going to hardwire your PC into your home internet. And you're gonna need another cable that is going to go to your RJ45 adapter, which is this. This is the magic sauce, right? So we're gonna plug from your internet router into here and then output it to USB-C, which is the connection that your Quest 3 needs. Um, the other thing that you can do with this, right, to get away from constantly having to um, recharge your Quest 3 or put on new batteries is you can insert power right in here. So you want to take a standard USB-C cable, you plug it in here, and then you want to take the other end and plug it into your brick in the wall or your power supply that's providing you with your USB-C power. It then transmits internet connection plus power to this cable but this cable's not very long. So the final piece of the puzzle is you need an extension cable. So you can basically do all of this cable management 
tuck it away, and then just have this one connection here, right? And I think the one that I have is about six feet long. So you take the other end of this, and then this plugs directly into your Quest 3. I also highly recommend getting some kind of cable management so that you can take your cable, you know, wrap it around and tie it in here so that it doesn't fall out. This here allows a fully powered Quest 3 to operate not at the 2.4 gigabytes per second that the wireless does, but at about, I think the Quest 3 caps out in a wired connection at 1200 megabytes per second which is more than enough than what um, you actually uh, stream data at, like the bit rate of a virtual desktop, I think from, from the research that I've done. And if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, put in the comments below, but it's about 350 megabytes per second. So you have tons of headroom. When you plug this in, it allows you to connect to virtual desktop and use all the functions and capability of virtual desktop, but you get the reliability and the transfer speed of using a wired connection. You don't have to deal with batteries. Um, I, I think it's just a much more stable solution if you're doing PC VR where you are sitting down. If you're in a flight sim, if you're in an iRacing rig, um, to me, this is just the way to go. So I hope you found this uh, to be helpful. Um, I highly recommend trying it out because I don't really think it's a, a big expense for most people to just get these parts. Um, but if you do try it out, let me know what you think. Put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear how this might have solved, you know, any stuttering problems that you might have. So with that, thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one.